ninth episode of the Cliff Ellis Show so far this season. I'm your host here, Dave Acker at WMBF Sports, joined alongside the one and only head coach, Cliff Ellis. Coach, uh, fantastic. Finally, get a win back at home for your guys. I mean, just first, the overall feeling of that game. Yeah, well, Georgia State's a team that won the championship a year ago, and, and, and they've got a lot of those players back. And they're the team that really dominated us early. Uh, game one, it was no contest. For us to come back with the loss of Esam spreading the floor out to be able to get a win, and it was pretty much a co convincing win. Uh, it was just a great feeling for our guys. Uh, they, they, they had a lot of joy in the locker room when it was all said and done, but I thought it was a team effort. I thought we were able to spread the ball around, make some plays uh, with Jimmy, make some plays with our guards, uh, and, and we made the three. You know, anytime you're shooting the ball and make some threes, uh, that's the key, and we hadn't been doing that through the course of the year. So good win for us against Georgia State. What was the, the I mean, you kind of answered it already, but the motto going in without Esam, I mean, just telling the guys, I mean. Well, we got to spread the floor out. We got to spread the floor out. We got to use the dribble drive a, a, a lot more because we really only have one post. We're pr pretty much playing Jimmy and Will are, are power forward type players, and they play out on the perimeter more than post up. And we, But it opens up the ability to be able to drive. And I think that our focus is to try to get uh, yeah, Antonio, Jamaro, uh, Henry, those guys that, that, that handle the ball, get them into the paint somewhat. Um, you mentioned Antonio, 22 points in that game. And I think you also said, you know, it was a convincing win. I think a 13 point lead at one point. Right. Um, to have him score 22 and to have it be convincing after, you know, the losing streak. I mean, just to have the guys yeah. Pedal to the metal. What, what Absolutely. Was that? Well, that, that, that was a key for our team, be able to get the ball on the attack, and we were able to do that. I, I thought that uh, our guys played uh, well with the ball and did some good things, and again, uh, we made some shots. When you take it in there, it's not just for the score. It's to go in there, and if there's not a second defender, you look in the score, but if there's a second defender, then kick the ball out, move it, and get the open shot. One last thing on that game. The locker room after the game. Joyous. Yeah excitement you know uh you know it, it felt good because georgia state perennially has been the the, the flagship of, of our league and they had beaten us so bad uh in game one in atlanta and it was uh it, it was good to get a little bit of revenge in that situation um then you had another game uh texas state in texas, still at home um yep finally back at home that game uh what was it to the wire. Um, eight to, lead changes, yep. 13 ties. Yes. What is that like playing in those games? Well, I mean, it's the way it's been all year. Uh, you know, we've been so close. We lost, again, we lose it at the buzzer uh, because we had a chance to win it. Uh, but at the same point in time, I thought the difference was the fact that their ability to make shots and make some from the three-point line, the three ball that had, that had fallen on Thursday wasn't going down Saturday the, the way that it was. So it was a grind game, but that's the way Texas State plays. Uh, Mason Harrell, their, their point guard, has been an all-conference player for life in our league. And he made some big plays for them with regards, uh, especially going down the stretch. And their defense, I think, is one of the tougher defenses in the league. They make you earn everything. You gotta earn every pass, you gotta earn every catch, you gotta earn every shot, and they made us earn it. And we were able to make some shots and make some plays. I thought that uh, 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 Antonio made some plays, uh, Jamaro made some plays. I thought Henry Abraham, when we got behind, he really put us on his back. He made some big threes to keep us in this basketball game. And uh, again, it comes down to the wire. We take the lead uh, with about 31 uh, seconds to go. Uh, we take the lead and then it's, uh, it's up to our defense. And uh, we simply, uh, didn't guard the ball tough enough. Uh, and they made a play at the end of the game and uh, we didn't front uh, and deny the pass and we also didn't get help. And uh, when you do that, you're just opening the door for somebody to come get a win. So hopefully we can learn from that. Uh, we're a smaller team uh, without Esam. We don't really have that uh, uh, rejector inside, that, that that, that guy in the paint that can reject stuff. So we have to deny those type passes. And uh, uh, so anyway, it was a tough loss, uh, but we've been through that um, so many times. I mean, right now uh, we could have 16 or 17 wins, but you know, it's not happened. 
And uh, we, we've just got to dig deeper is what I've told the team. Let's dig deeper and find a way to win that game. We've got the tournament uh, 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 in a week. And, uh, you know, we've got to use this time that we've got this week to try to fix these things. So, um, earlier in the season, you guys had the couple overtime games. I think they were here at home. Um, and you won close yes. games like that. Do you bring that up to the guys when you lose? Yeah, well, the, well, we can. Yeah, well, I mean, all the games are going to come down to it. You just got to dig deep. You know, we dug deep. We won some overtime games. We won some close games. Um, and uh, we've lost some. And uh, we've just got to find a way to dig deeper and get better. So, Coach, speaking of the players, we're going to talk to a couple of them here after the break, after a word from our sponsors. The Cliff. Star Backyards Yellowwood brand pressure treated pie. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. Hand cut USDA choice beef. Expertly butchered by Logan's in house professionals and grilled to perfection over muskeet wood fire. Yeah, that's steak done right. Don't want steak? Logan's mesquite flame grilled fresh, never frozen chicken and wild coho salmon are sure to please. Logan's, fresh food, cooked to perfection, just for you. Waccamaw Land and Timber has been serving the Grand Strand since 1982. The ultimate goal of Waccamaw Land and Timber is to achieve the best interests of both the buyer and the seller. We can handle all of your commercial real estate needs. But if you're just looking for a place to relax, hunt, or fish, the professionals at Waccamaw Land and Timber can find you the perfect recreational property as well. Call 843-449-0441 to discuss your real estate needs with Waccamaw Land and Timber. Where's Olivia? Upstairs taking a bath. You think he's cute? He's in two of my classes. Oh, sugar, you're about to have a mess on your hands. Upstairs, you got about 40 gallons of water that's getting ready to destroy your ceilings and your floors. Olivia, tub, now. Geez, that was a close one. Glad to help, honey. But let me tell you, when it comes to those teenage hormones, you are on your own. Trouble doesn't always come with a warning. You can rely on A&I. All right, and welcome back to the Cliff Ellis Show, everyone. Joined here with Antonio Day. Antonio, uh, these last couple games, man, I mean, 22 points, another, I think, 20-point game. How has that been for you, um, just feeling-wise, uh, especially with the with the win against Georgia State? Um, yeah, it, it feels good. You know, my teammates got confidence in me, and um, I'm just, uh, you know, making more layups now and get to the free throw line a little more. So I wish we could have won both games, but it feels good, you know, to get the rhythm back going into the uh, conference tournament coming up, so it feels good. And health of the team this year, you guys, is something uh, that's kind of made it more of a challenge. I mean, you were out for a little while at you know, the beginning of the season. Now Isam going out, um, you guys having to play smaller. What, what has that been like, I mean, successfully in the Georgia State game and then getting ready for the other game too? Uh, you know, we just had the neck man up mentality of just like, you know, just keeping the thing rolling without, he's a big part of us um, and he helped us a lot, but we kind of just, you know, get the space to floor a little more with playing smaller, but on the defensive end, we're obviously, uh, gullible to like giving up inside the paint stuff, but it's, it's been an adjustment, but I think we're doing pretty fine for the most part. Um, obviously you played well in the Georgia State game, but for you guys, I asked coach the same question. Was the locker room after that game, the win, was it a little sweeter after after the losing streak? Um, for sure, just like a sour relief, like finally just got one, uh, especially with it been at home um, and them beating us pretty bad the first time around. So it definitely felt good, but we try to not get too high because we know that we came off that losing streak and we still have a lot more to, to do. So it was it was definitely a good feeling, but not nothing too much. 
In the Texas State game, you guys had a couple games earlier in the season, the overtime games. I think they were here where you guys won close ones. To lose that close one like that, I mean, the lead changes back and forth the whole time. But just take me through and going playing in a game like that. I mean, well, at this time of the season, you want you want to win those games, those close uh, last minute games, because in a tournament, you know, it's, it's one game at a time. So we would love to have that that game and get it back and would have won, so we can get momentum going into the, the conference tournament. But it's always fun playing those games. It's exciting, um, and it could have went either way. And we just wish that it went our way. But you know, we're just moving on to the next game and just keeping it rolling. One last question I'll ask you, end on like a funny note. Uh, if you had a superpower, what would it be? And then favorite superhero, if it's not the same. That's a good question. Um, honestly, I, I would think probably reading people's minds. Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah, reading people's <laughs> minds. That would have to be the one I would say. What am I thinking? I don't no, know, I wish, I wish I knew. <laughs> no, all right, that's your favorite superhero too or no? I'm not really a big superhero guy, but okay. I'll, if I had to say, I'll say Spider-Man. Okay, all right. Cool. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate the yes, time. Yes, sir. Thank you. And we're going to be right back with another player. And welcome back, everybody. Join now with Linton Brown. Linton, it seems like you have been just on fire from behind the three-point arc, maybe the whole season, but specifically these last two games. Uh, what's that been like for you? Just, I mean, having the hot touch? Uh, just having, uh, finding the rhythm, just finding a just make myself comfortable finally uh, with the team and, like, finding my role. Last week, I asked Coach, you know, I think he was quoted uh, after, in the post-game interview on the radio. He, he said, we just need to make shots. It seems like against Georgia State, you guys finally did. Well, yeah. What was that like? It was, a, it, was, it, was a great, it was a great effort. It was a great effort. We all put in. We all got in the gym last, late that night, like, we worked out, got some shots up together. So, like, it just, it just helped find, find each other in specific spots. Um, and then you guys kind of had to change the game plan going into that one with Isam getting hurt. Um, that different style of play, spreading it out more. I mean, do you think it helps you guys a little? Or, uh, I mean, it, it helps us a lot because a lot of us don't really know how to play four and one out. But Isam was a big part in the offense, so like losing him was a big part of that game, and we had to really overcome. Then the next game, Texas State, I mean, you guys back and forth. I mean, I think it had eight ties, thirteen lead changes. I mean, what is like the mental um, going like that in a game back and forth? Just trying to win. That's all. Coaches keep preaching, preaching, keep playing hard. Like that's all we can do but sometimes it don't work in our favor. Um, and then I mentioned, I mean, the sh making the shots, and I talked to Coach about this. It seems like not only in the Sun Belt, across all college basketball, it's like anybody can beat anybody this year, it seems like. You guys know, and I mean, you just win a couple games in the Sun Belt tournament. I mean, if you guys are hitting shots, what, what, what would that mean for you guys? And what's the, like, the mindset going in? Uh, mindset going in is just to win, just to see how we can do, perform. Cause we have, uh, we have a lot of guys that's, that's coming back next year, so. This is our first time, this is a lot of people's first time in the conference tournament, so just try to build a mental for next year and this year. And Coach mentioned too, he, I guess, you know, you guys personally scheduled that Chicago State game to kind of mimic the tournament, that it's going to be a couple days mm -hmm. in a row. What is that like being a player? I mean, having to play potentially back-to-back -back games like that? It's great being a player and playing back-to-back -back games. I love playing basketball, so it, don't really, it doesn't really hurt me, but most of the guys going to complain about their physical body, so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be in the right mindset, I guess. Yeah. Right? Um, Last thing, and on a kind of a funny note, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? And then do you also have a favorite superhero? My favorite superhero, I gotta say Wolverine. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people won't say him, but that's my, that's my favorite hero. And then superpower, I'm gonna say flight. I, wanna, I like to fly. Okay. Yeah. Fly and be Wolverine at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that'd, that'd be crazy. It's a combo. Cool. Now I can fly home and come back. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, man, and good luck in the uh, conference tournament. Appreciate that. HDC is here to connect you to the things that matter most in your life. With the area's largest fiber optic network, HTC is here with the fastest speeds to help power your day. Do a little multitasking. Keep the peace. All to help your day run smoother than ever before. See how HTC is here to connect you to your world and take advantage of these great offers today. Another trial, another battle. Where's your strength? tenacity, what's your history, fighting for my clients in court. But what sustains me now is working with three of the finest individuals I've ever known, my family. There's power in family, power for our clients. Fighting for your rights is my family's business. Britain Law. Hand cut USDA choice beef. Expertly butchered by Logan's in-house professionals and grilled to perfection over mesquite wood fire. Yeah, that's steak 
done right. Don't want steak? Logan's Mesquite Flame Grilled Fresh Never Frozen Chicken and Wild Coho Salmon are sure to please. Logan's. Fresh food. Cooked to perfection. Just for you. And welcome back to the Cliff Ellis Show, everyone. Coach, uh, just continuing to get to know you. I think uh, this has been fun. And these questions more, some have been getting to know you off the court. Uh, I, myself, am a huge basketball fan, so I wanted to kind of ask a couple questions maybe related to um, just your experiences. And um, one of the things, you've mentioned the transfer portal a lot, but what are characteristics you look for when you're on the recruiting trail in, in players and maybe even in assistant coaches? If if you have a couple key things you, you like to look for in people? Well, I think with regards to the players, I think the number one thing is, you, first of all, you look at character. I think that's vital with regards to that. Uh, you're, you're looking at specific positions. So you gotta know whether it's a point guard, whether it's a two guard or a wing, whether it's a power forward, whether it's a post. You know, post is what we used to call the center. And you're looking for guys that, uh, that uh, kind of fit your system. We want guys that can run the floor. Uh, if you're a big guy, we want guys that can post up. For example, Esam's our post guy. We don't have a true post uh, now with regards to it. DJ's the closest thing to that. Uh, but uh, we want somebody that can post up, uh, might be able to score down low, and uh, a guy that'll go get a rebound from a perimeter standpoint three things that they can do with the ball, dribble, pass, and shoot. How well do they do that? Uh, are they selfish or are they unselfish? So you know, when you've got time, uh, when you're recruiting high school kids and kids that can be with you for a while, those are the things that you look for. In the transfer portal, it's changed because you have to depend on other people. You can watch film. You don't go watch them play at their school. You watch them, but you depend on uh, their coaches or whomever's coached them to give you the best expertise you can for a player. And uh, I found out uh, just in this short period of time with transfer portal that some of those things that have been said with transfers have not been true. Uh, whereas you can go out in the summertime with other guys and you can recruit and you can find out who those guys are in the transfer portal, you're pretty much, you know, dependent on uh, people from the outside, you don't get to go and visit them like you do other people. And so that makes it, you know, it makes it uh, an, an enigma, so to speak. You know, you don't, you don't know, you, sometimes you don't know what you get. Yeah. Um, you mentioned high school players. What do you, um, if you had a, a word of advice maybe to local high school kids around here that want to play at the D1 level, um, what's maybe a, a word to, to high school students trying to make it? Well, I think patience, because the one thing that the transfer portal has done, I mean, there's going to be 1,500 kids in the portal. Uh, and, and every school is looking for a 21-year-old as opposed to an 18 just because of maturity. Uh, so a lot of high school kids are getting weeded out. They don't get recruited. I would say that once you get somebody's attention, you know, go with the people that are showing you the most interest, uh, that people show that they care about you and have a willingness to, to, to work you and, and, and make you the best that you can be. Also understand with this transfer portal, you have to be patient as a player. Uh, there's gonna be older guys on the roster. So if you make that roster, be patient because it may not happen your first year. Uh, so patience is another key. What surprised you most when you started coaching here at Coastal? Uh, I, I think educating uh, the fans, not a basketball, um, not a lot of basketball tradition. I think Russ Bergman brought some in, but it had been one winning season in 13 years. Uh, and, uh, you know, just educating our fan and, and really recruiting, uh, bringing in when you've had one winning season in 13 years, you know, you really have to sell yourself because, you know, players, you know, you hadn't won in 13 years. You've had one winning season in 13 years. 
why should I go there? So I tried to sell myself uh, with regards to what had happened at Clemson and Auburn in my past, and it worked. Uh, and our coaching staff, I had I brought in coaches that uh, were familiar. I brought in a coach that played played for me in Don Hogan, uh, Mamadou Njai, who played for me, and they were big factors. Uh, Richie Riley, who's at South Alabama, came in. Those guys really did a great job, and and so uh, we uh, uh, had had to really work on that recruiting area. And we were, I think, we won the Big South in the third or fourth year. Uh, so, and we won uh, several championships and we've won one division title since we went to the Sun Belt. And the Sun Belt is just another grade and that's the other education that I'm even doing now is okay. We've got to educate ourselves with the way that this Sun Belt is because we've got teams that uh, traditionally are way ahead of us and they've been in leagues that understand what it takes to win. And uh, the Sun Belt is growing uh, with the exception of Louisiana this year, I think all of us are kind of in the same box. There's not a lot of difference. But those four teams that have come in, they've come in kicking. But they've been in leagues that understood it. So, you know, a lot of things that, 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 that go on with regards to it. They're ahead of the game with the transfer portal. They're ahead of the game with the NIL. Uh, they charter for the most part. Uh, we bus. Uh, those are things that are that are different, and uh, so even just the facilities I've seen so far. And 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 facility, we've got a nice facility. We do. Uh, we need a practice facility, uh, but at the same point in time, we have to be patient. The league became new this year, right. but but we went through a lot. We went through COVID since 2020. This is you know we we've gone through a lot. There's been a lot of things that have happened. Very interesting stuff there. And coach, we're going to be right back right after this. Where's Olivia? Upstairs taking a bath. You think he's cute? He's in two of my classes. Oh, sugar, you're about to have a mess on your hands. Upstairs, you got about 40 gallons of water that's getting ready to destroy your ceilings and your floors. Olivia, tub, now. Geez, that was a close one. Glad to help, honey. But let me tell you, when it comes to those teenage hormones, you are on your own. Trouble doesn't always come with a warning. You can rely on A&I. Five Star Backyards, Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. HTC is here to connect you to the things that matter most in your life. With the area's largest fiber optic network, HTC is here with the fastest speeds to help power your day. Do a little multitasking. Keep the peace. All to help your day run smoother than ever before. See how HTC is here to connect you to your world and take advantage of these great offers today. The Cliff Ellis And welcome back, everybody, to the Cliff Ellis Show. Coach, uh, probably one of the burning questions everybody wants to know, getting ready for the Sun Belt Conference Championship. It's uh, kind of what you get all season. You get ready for this. Here you we go. You got a couple shots at it. 
Um, what's what are the leading messages to the team heading heading into the tournament? Well, it's a new season. It's a new season. This is the season you play for. You get into March Madness. Anything can happen. You go into the Pensacola Bay Center. There's a hockey uh, rink. It's cold. You play the coldest game you've ever played. I can tell you that right now. So that means that uh, uh, you you may play more zone, uh, but you you know you got everybody zero and zero. But as I look at, and I've told our team this, I think there's five teams that stepped out in front of everybody. Uh, Louisiana Lafayette, Marshall, uh, Old Dominion, James Madison, Southern Mississippi. We didn't play Southern Mississippi. We beat Louisiana Lafayette. We beat Old Dominion. We should have beaten James Madison. Marshall, we could have had him here. So those are the teams that have stepped up. But those, out of those, Louisiana Lafayette among the teams that were here before that we added those teams, that's the only team that has really said, I can do it with these guys. And uh, the rest of us are in that. So there's not a team that I don't think we can win. Now we've been hurt. I mean, I mean that's a big loss losing Esau. But we've had a couple of weeks to prepare and play a different game. And we just got to dig deep, uh, spread the floor out. Key's gonna be play hard on defense and make some shots. If we do that, I think we've shown we can play with anybody. Uh, and it's March Madness, anything can happen. So you're zero and zero. This is what I tell the team. Zero and zero, this is what you play for. 140 possessions, one possession at a time. Let's go get it. Awesome. I mean, you said it. I mean, March Madness, it's one of the great reasons. The end oh, of February. It's the greatest March time of the is... year. Greatest time of the year. Uh, March and uh, basketball people that are not even basketball fans love March Madness. I mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, the Super Bowl's over. We go to this. Uh, then you got the Masters. You got, uh, you got the, you go to World Series. <laughs> then you're back. Boom, boom, boom. It's March Madness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but March Madness, I can tell you, is one of the elite things in the game of basketball. I love it and everybody loves it. Basketball in general, not just the Sun Belt Conference. It seems like this year, you kind of said it already, but anybody can beat anybody. It seems that's true throughout college yeah, I basketball. I don't think there's a dominant team. Does that help you? I mean, just even telling the guys, hey, anybody can beat anybody in this thing. Let's go, let's go try to win. Let's go well, try let's to win this do, thing. I think we start with one game at a time. And I think we, I sent the message and the fact that everybody's zero and zero. Now let's take it one game at a time and see what happens. Um, one last question, getting the guys ready to play potentially multiple days in a row like that, I know that's hard on the body. I mean, what, is that just you trained all year for it? Everybody's in the same boat. That is why we played Chicago State on a Monday. Is it played a non-conference game. South Alabama is the only other team that did this. We played Thursday, Saturday, Monday. That's the closest we could do. And uh, well, we won two of those three games, but two out of three is not good. It's one and done, you're out. And Coach, thank you very much for all the insight. I wish you the best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. Uh, one last show for us and everybody. I hope you join us next week.